different kit guru and in this review I'm going to be taking a look at the ASIO Retro Classic Keyboard which retails for around £190. I spent a few of you have probably already seen the unboxing that I did of this keyboard and it came very nicely packaged and my first impression was just how beautiful it is. This keyboard really is a work of art with its unique typewriter design. I think it's a great mix of like modern tech and vintage style. I've got the color posh, which is like a white leather with a copper frame, but it's actually also available in three different other designs. You've got Onyx, which is black leather with a black chromed frame, Artisan, which is black leather with the same sort of like copper frame, and then Elwood, which is walnut wood with a gunmetal frame. I've been trying this keyboard out for a little while now just to see if it's more than a pretty face and whether it's worth that rather expensive price tag. This keyboard has some real weight to it. It weighs just over 1.5 kilograms and the body feels really solid and well built. It doesn't seem to have any sort of flex to it despite it having a plastic back. And I think this is likely due to this like zinc aluminium frame that's got going around the outside, which is then plated depending on which color you go for. It's got a nice touch of these vintage hex bolts that go around the outside and I think it gives it a really sort of like steampunk feel. The top plate is coated in leather, which is a material I never expected to see on a keyboard, but I think that looks really nice and it sort of ties in well with the overall theme. It makes this keyboard quite luxurious. I also like that they've embossed the lettering for the status LEDs into the leather itself. Another really good touch is the sort of like vintage style plaque. I think it's quite a tasteful way of doing the ASIO branding on this keyboard and it fits really well with the vintage theme. The USB cable is white and braided, so not only does it look a little bit better, it should help with sort of general wear and tear. It's also a decent length at 1.8 meters. The height on this keyboard is adjustable. It's got these sort of pillar style feet. Uh, the two back feet you can twist in order to adjust the height. I really quite like them. I prefer them over the sort of uh, flip out feet you get on most keyboards as they don't seem to move. They're also quite attractive because they're done in the same copper coloration and the large rubbery surface area means that they stick really well to the desk. Even though the height on this keyboard is adjustable, I did find that it would probably really benefit from having wrist rest. My wrist really began to ache while I was gaming on this keyboard. And I would really love if ASIO brought out like a matching wrist rest with the same sort of like leather and metal materials. This keyboard does have LED backlighting and like I mentioned in my unboxing video, it isn't particularly bright in a well-lit room. However, it does show up really well at night. On the posh variant of the keyboard, it has this really nice sort of warm orange color that I think matches really well with the copper. On the other variants of the keyboard, it has white backlighting. It's quite a sort of a subtle modern touch that I think goes really well with the overall theme. You can also adjust the settings by pressing the FN key and then another key. And I like that they've put little symbols on them to tell you which ones do which. You've got the option to change the brightness. You can turn the backlighting on and off and then there's a reactive and a breathing mode. There are only two settings and there's no option to sort of change the speed. But I am quite glad that this keyboard hasn't been ruined by sort of flashy RGB backlighting. There's a wide selection of hotkeys on this keyboard, which I think is a must have as they always come in handy. The media control keys and the calculator key can easily be reached with one hand. There's also options to open the start menu, open the file explorer, open your emails and open a media player. You've also got an option to lock the Windows start key, which is great for gaming. And there's a little LED that lights up to let you know when it's turned on. Using this keyboard definitely took a little bit of getting used to. Uh, at first I was really inaccurate while I was gaming and typing which was really frustrating. The keys are slightly smaller than you find on like a normal keyboard and they're also a little bit indented. If you don't seem to hit them right in the like sweet spot then it's really easy to like slide off and hit the neighboring key. I also noticed that the backspace key was uh, smaller like you find on the US keyboard and the hash key is actually in a different position. The mechanical switches used on this keyboard are the ASIO Typelet, which are made by Kale, and they're the company that used to make the old Razer mechanical switches. They're raised off the body of the keyboard itself, and I think that it looks really nice and sort of allows the backlighting to have a really good effect, but unfortunately they do actually have quite a little bit of wobble to them. 
Because of the typewriter style, Azio has opted to use uh, clicky and tactile switches, which are very similar to Cherry MX Blues, or they're pretty much identical to Kale Razor Green switches, if you're a fan of those. They require quite a bit of actuation force, and there is a decent amount of travel before you get to the actual bump. It does make sense due to the typewriter style of this keyboard, but I would like the option to choose other switches. Tactile clicky switches are really good for typing on, but I didn't have a great time trying to game on this keyboard. I much prefer Cherry MX red, brown or speed switches. The keycaps themselves are a little bit of a disappointment when it comes to quality. They aren't bad and I am being picky because this keyboard is up there in price, but they just seem a little bit lightweight and flimsy, and as if the white plastic coating can wear away with time quite easily. However, I do like the way that they look, and I think the font you use suits the overall style really well. When I got used to the keycaps and the tactile switches on this keyboard, I now actually find typing on it really quite satisfying. I love the like clicky clacky noise and I've become accustomed to smashing against the stiffer keys. I think if you do a lot of typing, then you're gonna have a good time with this keyboard. I mean, you can game on it, but for me, it wasn't really ideal. I just didn't feel like I could play to the best of my ability as the switches are a little too firm and I kept sort of hitting the wrong keys in the heat of battle due to their rounded shape. However, I do know that some of you really enjoy tactile switches for gaming on, so I think it is down to personal taste. This keyboard does have N key rollover, which is beneficial for gaming, and you also have the option to toggle to six key rollover. But unfortunately, there isn't really sort of any indication as to which setting is selected. Overall, the ASIO Retro Classic keyboard is beautiful, it's solid, and it's really good for typing on, but unfortunately it is far from perfect. It's missing a lot of features I would expect to find on a keyboard in this price range. There's no option to record macros, there's no wrist rest, there's not a wide range of Cherry MX switches to choose between, and I think it'd be quite nice to have some sort of software for more advanced macro and lighting options. However, because of its aesthetic appeal and unique vintage style, I definitely think it can get away with it. You can tell that it's been designed to win you over with its good looks. I think if you've fallen in love with this keyboard, then you're definitely in a little bit of trouble and you just have to close your eyes as you press buy and pay the rather painful £190 asking price. If you like this video from Kit Guru, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from Kit Guru, hit the subscribe button. <laughs>